Are there evangelical Christians in Russia? Despite the domination of the Orthodox Church for more than 1,000 years, there is quite a significant evangelical movement in Russia. Evangelicals are active in Russia for more than 150 years, they have their own specific history, theology and lifestyle, and they are more impactful than even the majority Orthodox Church in their social support ministries. But first, who are evangelicals? Conventionally, evangelicals are Protestant Christians who emphasize the inerrancy and sufficiency of the Bible for faith and practice and conversion of every adult individual. Consequently, they are most active in evangelism and missions. They are also known worldwide as Bible-believing or born-again Christians. In Russia, they are mostly represented by Baptists, Pentecostals and Seventh-day Adventists. Before the mid-19th century, most Protestants in Russia were of a foreign origin – Germans, Finnish, Dutch, and so on. However, as I have discussed in one of my previous videos, a translation of the Bible into the then modern Russian language was made in the first half of the 19th century, and almost immediately after that, Russian evangelical groups started to emerge across the country in a mini-reformation. Most of them were not just Russian speakers, but locals, converted from the local formerly Orthodox population. The movement emerged from three directions. First, Ukraine, then a part of the Russian Empire, where Dutch Mennonites and German Baptists influenced the local Bible study groups that were usually called Stundisti by the German word Stunde for the Bible study hour. Second, the Caucasus Mountains region, the home for the term Caucasian, is where many sectarian groups split from the Orthodox Church were exiled to. Their simplified theology, liturgy and an emphasis on the Word of God was so close to the evangelical teachings, especially Baptists, that many of them easily joined the new movement. Third, paradoxically enough, there was a significant revival in the aristocratic circles in the imperial capital of St. Petersburg. Converted by a British missionary Lord Radstock, a wealthy retired military colonel Vasily Pashkov launched an evangelical movement in the aristocratic salons and homes of his noble friends. They promptly abandoned their estate privileges and formed communities together with their servants peasants and city dwellers. Before Nicholas II issued a liberalization act of 1905, converting Orthodox people into any other faith was a crime. Since 1905, through the first years of the Soviet Russia, up until the 1930s, evangelicals flourished. They opened new houses of prayer, planted churches, opened their educational institutions and converted big numbers of people. Stalin's repressions put an end to it, with severe persecutions of all social groups. Most of the religious leadership was simply destroyed or sent to Gulag. In 1943, Stalin's government decided to employ religious communities to support the population in the ongoing war. The Orthodox Church was allowed to elect a new patriarch, and evangelicals were allowed to form and officially register one union. In order to do that, two biggest churches, the Baptist Church and the Church of Evangelical Christians, merged together. Some Pentecostals joined the Union, but couldn't last there long due to significant theological differences. Seventh-day Adventists were also allowed to register a Union later in 1946. After Stalin, Nikita Khrushchev came to power. Although he is remembered as a reformer, he launched an anti-religious campaign directly aimed at certain religious communities. He enforced the anti-religious legislation, which practically prohibited missions, church attendance by children, religious education for children, baptism of the young people under 30, and much more. A significant part of the Baptist community in 1961 split from the Union and refused to obey and even to register with the state. Since then, and until the perestroika and liberalization of mid-1980s, unregistered Baptists and never registered Pentecostals were severely persecuted, put in prisons, discriminated on the job market and education, lost custody of their children, and even their houses were often bulldozed if illegal church services were held in them. 
evangelicals in turn unfolded an unprecedented dissident campaign. Their petitioned the authorities and religious organizations abroad, established underground printeries, smuggled Bibles and other literature from abroad, and organized support for the families of imprisoned believers. Some Pentecostals campaigned for the immigration to the USA, but only two families, seven people in total, succeeded. After the liberalization of religion by Mikhail Gorbachev, evangelicals actively unfolded missions to the far north, where they converted a significant number of indigenous populations and Central Asia. Their evangelism at home has been most successful in the ministries of the so-called social support – drug rehabs, prisons, soup kitchens for the homeless, orphanages, hospitals, and so on. In the Putin's Russia, the comply or goodbye religious policy of the Soviet Union is making a comeback. Hence, we will probably see more persecutions of the unregistered groups and the ones most active in missions and evangelism. Please like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. I see you all next time.